Hello everybody, you are listening to Money Grows on Trees. I'm your host, Pastor Alfred. Money Grows on Trees is a broadcast that briefly highlights certain portions of books that I've written or I'm currently writing that relates to the subject of money. For more information on topics covered in this series, kindly go to pastoralfred.com and make sure you subscribe. That's where you get alerts when new content is posted all contents on the site is going to be a blessing to you you really need to go to the site and check it out for yourself also tell your friends and family about the site pastoralfred.com today i would like to tell you that all bad news is somebody else's good news Therefore, position yourself to always have good news, whether there is good news or bad news. Praise the Lord. Let us open our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 7, verse 15 to 23. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And they went in unto Noah, into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life and they that went in went in male and female of all flesh as god has commanded him and the lord shut him in and the flood was forty days upon the earth and the waters increased and bare up the ark and it was lifted up above the earth and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth and the ark went upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upwards did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land died, and every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive. And they that were with him in the ark, praise the Lord. Now, when you look through this portion of the scripture, you see something very interesting. The same waters that was drowning everybody else, the same waters that was bad news to everybody else, the same waters that killed everybody else was lifting up Noah. You see, the worse it got for everybody else who didn't listen to God and who didn't listen to Noah, the first recorded evangelist in the Bible, when it comes to really large-scale evangelism, all those who didn't listen to him all perished. They all died. And the water that was making things worse for them was actually making things better for Noah. It was lifting him up as he was in the ark and all those that were with him. You see, it kept lifting him up. It was good news for him, but bad news for everybody else. The truth of the matter is that you have to realize that all bad news is somebody else's good news. One interesting story I read in the book many years ago was the story about two different people who went to a filling station and it showcases the differences between mentality. You see, one person went to a filling station, a petrol station, to buy petrol for his car, to buy gas for his car, and he saw that the prices were up. And what did he do? He complained about his ah, the prices are always rising, the gas prices are always rising. This is such a problem. 
life is difficult, all those kind of things. That is what his mentality was. That was what his words were. But another person went to the same petrol station and saw that the gas prices had risen. And guess what he did? He said, wow, the gas prices are, have risen again. And it's like they are always going to be rising. So what am I going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to buy shares in an oil company. And guess what? When he did, of course, the gas prices increased as it always did. And he made money. So you see, the same thing happened to both of those people. But they look at it from two different perspectives. A lot of people look at bad news. You see, they don't see that it's somebody else's good news. So what you should do is position yourself in a way that it is going to be your good news. Now, this does not mean that you should pray for the downfall of others or you should pray for bad things to happen to others or hope for bad things to happen to others and be an oppressor. You don't have to be an oppressor. You can be the good guy and the savior in the equation while financially increasing from the situation. Let us look at it this way. A place like Chicago, there are more deaths in Chicago than the Iraq war. It has been said that uh, more people have died due to gang violence in Chicago than in the Iraq war. But look at this. This has created different financial opportunities. Now, you should be careful with what I'm about to tell you. Do not take this and make yourself an evil person. You see, who only thinks about profits? I just want you to see first of all that all bad news is somebody else's good news. Anytime something bad is happening, it is good news for somebody else. Somebody else is benefiting from it. It does not mean that that person who is benefiting from it is a bad person or that person initiated it. You see? And no matter what you do, do not aid the continuation of that bad thing happening to whoever it is happening to. So back to the example of the deaths in Chicago. The deaths in Chicago has created opportunities for funeral homes. It has created opportunities for companies who make flowers and roses. It has created opportunities for a lot of charities and NGOs to start a lot of problem to start a lot of programs, sorry, that will bring people out of gangs. And it will be very easy for you to raise money for your NGO where you bring up the facts that more people are dying in Chicago than US soldiers died in the Iraq war. You see, when you put up such statistics, it's very easy for you to raise up money and especially when you consider that the people who are dying are black people. You see, a lot of white people love to give to causes to aid black people in America. And they give in millions and billions. So you are putting yourself in that situation. That is a lot of money. That is millions and billions. But you see, it is a bad thing that is happening. But it has created a series of opportunities. It has created opportunities for you to start your own private schools in Chicago, to get funding to start your own private schools in Chicago. It has created opportunities for you to start a series of companies because you can bring up the topic that if these people had jobs and these people had opportunities like people in most other areas, they would not being gangs now that is not completely true but that has i guess a pinch of truth to it but selling points like that could help you raise a lot of money and i mean millions and billions what i'm trying to point out is that yes it is a bad thing but it is somebody else's good news can you imagine the profits of the funeral service homes in Chicago compared to funeral service homes in other parts of the country. And let us understand something about people dying. Not only does the funeral service home make money, there are other things attached to it. There are other events, even catering companies, you know, people will eat at the funeral. And there are other after service companies that will be needed to render their services as a result of those deaths. There's also the 
open market for counseling services i know that the world clearly exploits this like nothing else there are a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists that pay people sorry that ask people to pay them like hundred dollars a minute for advice and what they are just doing is listening to the person talk and talk and talk about all his problems and at the end of the day this psychiatrist or psychologist who has the most expensive car in the world drives away with giving only one word of advice that that person could have gotten from his mother or his father you see so there is a large market for that service in chicago you see in such a scenario because you have to understand another thing a lot of black people do not go to psychologists and psychiatrists so that is also a selling point for you to get funding to start a series of such services the point that i'm driving home is that this tragedy has created a lot of opportunities another example is for example in nigeria many years ago during the liberian war you know the liberian war is something that lasted so long that people got tired of measuring when it started and when it stopped you see at least those who were alive during that period we give god praise that the war has stopped but during that period there was a time that the nigerian government sent nigerian soldiers over to liberia to fight now this is a war but somebody saw an opportunity because nigerians were not used to liberian food so that person started canning nigerian food and i'm talking about really local african nigerian food the person started canning it and sending it over to liberia and the nigerian soldiers were buying it because they wanted their home food they wanted the feel of their home you see so it was a war but it was also an opportunity the same thing with all the iraq war and all the different wars that america is engaging in you are you must have heard the phrase the military industrial complex now that is an interesting phrase but you see whether there is an a military industrial complex or not even though there is but there doesn't have to be the fact is that everything that happens is an opportunity to make money even bad things i would say especially bad things you see when america goes to a country to fight a war or carry out whatever military activities they carry out look at the stock prices of companies that make equipment that the military uses the stock prices of those companies rise you see that is a lot of money being generated companies make those weapons that are used companies make the nuclear warheads companies make even if you are somebody that you do not want to invest in a company that makes weapons that is understood but guess what pharmaceutical companies make a lot of money during such periods because you have to see that with that war there are a lot of people who are going to be wounded in battle that creates a need for a lot of bandages a lot of medical supplies a lot of first aid kits companies create the products that you see in first aid kits that is money being generated so you can see that it is bad news people are fighting and dying but money is being generated you can position yourself how you want to position yourself if you want to position yourself in a way that you are making money from it that is up to you but the point of this which i would like to emphasize again is for you to really understand that all bad news it does not matter what it is is somebody else's good news I want to change the way you think so that even when you see yourself in a situation where something bad is about to happen to you you can see that it is somebody else's good news so position yourself where that person is positioned and you will turn that bad news into good news that is 
one point I want to drive home. I do not want you to turn into a financial evil genius that takes advantage of tragedies and focuses on that because you have to understand that God is looking at your heart. You see, if you are doing this or you are just interested in exploiting people and taking advantage of people's pain and people's sorrows, God is washing your heart and you would end up going to hell. Seriously. You see, this broadcast, what I'm telling you, is just so that you will understand the truth and the reality of things. So that you would really know that there is really no bad news. Bad news is dependent on you and where you are positioned. You see, there is no such thing as bad news. It's a matter of how you see it. The limitation of your mind, how you are seeing that, how you are seeing that situation, and where you are positioned. Let us say that you live in a house, and your house rent is due, and you are about to get kicked out of the house because you cannot pay for the house. Now look at that situation. That situation may be bad news for you. But it's good news for a lot of people. It is good news for real estate agents. Because you see, now you would have to look for a cheaper um, apartment to stay in that you can actually afford. So it is good news for real estate agents. So you yourself can see that it is an opportunity. Why can't you become a real estate agent? You see, why can't you do some selling or some intermediary work in the real estate industry yourself and quite frankly in a lot of nations and states even in the united states and a lot of countries all around the world you do not need a license to become a real estate agent as a matter of fact for most of you you already have degrees that's make you qualify to be a real estate agent in nations where the laws enforce that you must have a license to be a real estate agent. So you see, that is one opportunity. You see, another thing is that you are now in a position where you yourself can begin to make money. Let us say that you are about to be kicked out of your house because you cannot pay the rent. Guess what? you can look for a luxury apartment you see and the fact that you are in this situation means that there are a lot of other people who are in this situation hunt for people who are in the same situation who are also about to be kicked out of the apartments because they cannot pay for it let us say at the end of the day you end up getting 12 or 8 people who are in that same situation or perhaps even um, 20 or 50 people because of the city you live in or because many people are uh, complaining about finances and things like that. Let us say you get that many people. It is now beginning to turn into a business. Now you can pull resources, which will even be half of what those people are currently paying now. You can pull resources and start a company that rents other people's houses, that rents even luxury apartments, and what you do is that you they split the billing. So at the end of the day, each individual person is paying less, but they are all living in the same place. You know, there are some apartments that are big enough, and these are people that are about to be thrown out of their house. These are people, they really don't have any choice of, of where to live, you know. They are about to be thrown out. They do not have enough money to pay their rent. But you see, on the other side of it, it's an opportunity for you to make money from these people. So you see, it is a matter of positioning. They will pay what they have. They will be willing to bring money. They will be willing to pay you for your services rather than live out on the streets under a bridge or somewhere where it is not safe for them to live. You see, 10 people can stay in one luxury condo very comfortably. Especially when the other alternative is them living out on the streets. So you see, you can even create a billing system where 
you put up the money up front even if it means you ex as you establish your company properly you get the documents signed because you know it takes only twenty dollars to start a company you get a bank to sponsor you so you put up the upfront cost to the landlords of these different apartments that you buy and you are now putting people inside you see and then you put up a situation where they pay on a daily basis you see that way they'll be able to afford it and as a matter of fact you can end up raising more money that way than a landlord who is asking for a year's worth of payments or a month's worth of payments because those people go out to work and come back every day think about it at the end of the day even if you are collecting something like only two dollars a day or yeah and you are doing it in a convenient way like they should post it to so so and so your paypal account or whatever online account so every day they make their two dollar a day payments to live there any day that they don't pay they get kicked out so what happens the money they have paid previously you enjoy so there are other things like this there are so many opportunities for you to create from that situation of you being kicked out of your house because you do not or the place where you live because you do not have enough money to pay rent you see it is a matter of positioning what i want you to see is that though it looks like it is bad news it is actually somebody else's good news and what you have to do is to readjust so that it will now become your good news let us say that you have a son or a child who is about to be kicked out of school because you do not have money to pay that child's school fees that is an opportunity because you see you can now start a homeschooling business there are other children who are in that situation as a matter of fact there are even children who have never gone to school before who perhaps because of the country you live in there's no program available by the government so there are people around who have not been to school before you can start your homeschooling business and you can get funding from it by telling people that you have started it online. You can create a GoFundMe page or create your own websites and even have online courses and things like that and get funding from charitable don donations. Then register your homeschooling business as a legitimate NGO or if you want to go the profit routes, you can do that. And at this, as you are doing that, you get funding by the decreasing the price seriously you see and also another thing that you should think about is that from that same situation you can actually end up creating an organization that will be a rival to the school and will make more money than the school because for example there are certain stages in the academic life of nations where nations structure the academic their academic um, educational structure there are certain stages where what is needed is certain the certain um documents like for example the sat um the ged you know they are looking at those scores you see and those things are gotten after an exam is taken people in some cases are not looking at the schooling and the degrees from the school itself and there are even schools that allow people to take to pay certain amounts and take their exams in other words that person may not be a student of the school but that person can take the exam from the school on the day that the school has exams and then get a degree from that school if that person passes that exam so some nations have those plans so in such nations where the educational structure is that way your homeschooling business can rival with actual schools you see when you do it this way because they do not need to pay the expensive school fees and do all that they can come to your homeschooling business you teach them and you get them ready for those exams because at the end of the day it is those exams that them passing or failing will determine if they will 
go to college or they will get further degrees that is what they will show nobody is looking at proof and evidence that that person spent year after year after year in so so and so schools they are just looking at certain results and what you scored you see and those results can be gotten when those exams are taken which the one of the requirements of such exams is not evidence that that person went to an accredited school that that person attended every day year after year after year during a certain duration or number of years i hope you get what i'm saying so that bad news of your child coming back home because you do not have enough money to pay for your child's school fees is actually good news in disguise you see so that is what i'm telling you it does not matter what the situation is every bad news that you hear is somebody else's good news and i use the example of war because what could seem to be more terrible than war you know as a matter of fact when it comes to natural disasters a lot of money is made by ngos charity organizations and even non-charity organizations because let us be honest when there is like a tornado or a hurricane somewhere and charity organizations send those people supplies let me ask you a question do the charity organization make the products that they are sending no the charity organization buys those products from companies so guess what those companies are making money those profit companies are making money let us say that there is a tornado or there is a hurricane somewhere and now people have no clean drinking water they need bottled water since they are used to bottled water and they need um tissue paper and basic things stationaries um um pharmaceuticals and all the rest of them your company can make deals with the largest ngos that during such times you will sell them a pro their, your product for a discount and guess what since they are buying in bulk you'll be making a lot of money so these are handwritten deals that enable you to buy yourself a future guarantee of sales in your company all for free you see you are buying a future for your company by penny such deals so i'm just trying to really show you something it does not have to be that somebody starts a company for the sole purpose of exploiting tragedies or taking advantage of bad things happening or creating bad things you see this is the situation this is the reality of the matter this is um the truth about things you know the scripture says god calls light out of darkness you see god calls light out of darkness out of darkness you can create money out of darkness you can call forth wealth out of poverty you can call forth wealth out of bad things you can call forth good things you see that is the truth of the matter that is the reality of the matter you need to let this dawn on your spirit and understand this that really nothing bad happens it's a matter of how you see it nothing bad happens it's a matter of how you see it and where you are positioned if you position yourself rightly and you see things rightly because your mind is not limited and your sight is not limited because you know your intelligence has to grow so that you can see the jewel in the stone you can see the angel in the stone you know you have to see the good news inside the bad news this also applies for good news in good news there is more good news in every good news there is there is more good news as a matter of fact when there is good news for somebody else there is good news for you inside it you need to listen to what i'm saying when you hear that something good has happened to somebody else there is good news specifically for you inside it 
using these same principles, you have to look for it and get it. You see, let us say that you hear that somebody started a real estate company and their real estate company is booming and booming and growing and growing and things are just going up that this person had a bad childhood where they are coming from is so difficult things were so difficult for them things were so hard for them but now they are doing very well they are getting richer and wealthier that very soon they will become billionaires guess what there's good news for it in you because it means that there is a market that is still unfair it means that there is apparently a market that there is still a lot of room for more people because if there is more room and there is unending room for that person to be growing there is also room for you to start a company in that same industry and, and enjoy that growth you see if somebody's customers in a particular service or company or, or the product that that person is giving to people if the customers is increasing from 1000 to 1 million to 2 million to 10 million to 100 million it is not something for you to look at and be jealous and say wow one day god will do something like that for me no it means that since there is endless growth upwards and the customers do not finish there is so much demand the demand keeps expanding and expanding that means there's room for you to start your own company that does that provide that same product or service in a unique way uniquely branded for you but it's there is room for you and in that same way that that person is growing you also will grow when you start your own that is what it means so there is good news for you in other people's good news so technically realistically it must dawn on you that there's no such thing as bad news it is you how you choose to interpret it how you choose to see it it's a matter of your perception how you see it and how you position yourself let us say that you hear that a friend of yours is now sick in the hospital you see it's a matter of your perception you see not only is there opportunity for you to start your own hospital because clearly other people are in that same situation where they need hospitals to be in. There is also the matter of, that is an opportunity for you to demonstrate the healing power of God. You see, you can carry yourself there to that hospital, lay hands on that person and heal that person. It's up to you. So you see, that bad news that you heard that somebody is now sick and dying of cancer, it's actually good news because it's an opportunity for you to demonstrate the power of God to reach out to more people let that person also know about the power of God the healing power of God and even let the news of that spread abroad which will be good for you which will only glorify you and point people to Christ you see so that is the reality of the matter nothing bad happens it's all a matter of your perception and your positioning you need to learn to position yourself to perceive things differently and position yourself rightly. Even if you hear that the nation that you are in is about to go into war, it's a matter of perception and how you position yourself. You see, even if you hear that another nation which is 100 times more powerful is coming to your borders to kill all of you and to make those that we make slaves slaves and do all the damage and steal all that you you and your nation has built for years even if you hear that it's a matter of perception and positioning there is the option of you seeing and realizing that that is an opportunity for you to demonstrate the power of god by you praying and receiving answers there is also opportunities a lot of financial opportunities that arise from that situation both for your for your country because your country is actually going to involve themselves in a lot of things to create walls of defenses and money is going to be generated companies are going to need to provide the defense that is needed that is also an opportunity for ngos to raise money from donors who will want to help to defend the country that is also an opportunity for several different industries that cater to 
defense and even to attacks you see so there are a lot of opportunities there and you need to position yourself correctly on receiving that news perhaps it is best for you to position yourself outside of that country you see Perhaps it is better for you to also, in realizing that, realize that a lot of people will want to position themselves outside of that country. And the government also will want to keep people inside the country. So that is also two different opportunities on two opposing sides for you to create wealth. You can invest in a touring company and exec an existing touring company. You can invest in existing airplane companies. You can Invest in a series of things. And another thing that you have to know is that in such situations, let us say that there is a lot of fear that things are going to go bad for that nation. What happens to the price of real estate in such countries? It drops. You see, people start selling their lands. So what can you do in that situation? Start buying land. Because you see, when the smoke clears and that country does not attack or the attack is unsuccessful guess what you are not the owner of majority of the land in that country because everybody sold out of fear that they are going to lose everything and everything they have will be seized now on the topic of what of if that other nation invades and seizes their land let us understand something your name is now there as a new owner so that gives you a different positioning than you had before so you can bargain and you can position yourself in a way that if things are restored or if another nation rises against that nation you see you can lay claim that you own this 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 this, this. your name was on it and this government came in and took all this and things will be revert back to you being the owner, even though you bought all that land for free. Because the truth of the matter is that, let us say that when one nation invades another nation, you see, and another nation which is more stronger comes in and saves the day and sh shifts that invading nation out. Guess what? That nation now has to restore everything to the previous owners of that nation. So that now is you. Who bought all that land for a very cheap price during that situation so it is only a matter of perception and positioning you also can create a lot of humanitarian activities and you also because of your wealth can help and feed a lot of your countrymen in such situations you can start the largest orphanages you can start different shelters and take care of a lot of people and these are people that will be loyal to you and will be willing to use their expertise to start companies for you within that nation that will create products and services that will be sent to different parts of the world. So that is just the reality of the thing. You really need to understand it. Remember, like in the case of Noah, you know, the water that was drowning everybody and killing everybody and sending them six feet deep, you know, was sending Noah higher and higher and higher. You see, so the reality of the matter is nothing bad happens. You see, and if you are on a certain level, you will see that you don't have to wait for good things to happen. You are not somebody who is looking out for good things to happen. You pull forth light out of darkness. You create good news out of all news. Whether it is bad news or good news, you create good news from it. So you see, that is the will of God for you. You see, for more information on this topic and on a variety of different subjects, you have to go to pastoralfred.com and subscribe and also get my books. You see, I'll do my best to write even more and more books so that you can get to those books and learn more and improve yourself. It is not enough for you to hear things like this. You have to apply it in your life. You have to start seeing this way it's your heart you have to let yourself change your perception you have to let your perception change you have to change your perception it is not enough to hear the word agree with it and say wow i've not heard something like this before this sounds nice this is really interesting and you do not apply it if you do not apply it if you do not let it really change you and if you do not apply it and act on it 
you would suffer like everybody else. You would suffer the same way you have always been suffering. You would be like the person who looked at himself in a mirror and went away forgetting what manner of man he was. Don't be that way. You see, it is not enough for you to hear the word of God or for you to hear words of wisdom. You have to apply it. Your response matters. It's all about your response. How do you respond to what you have heard now? So you see, from now on, don't ever say you have bad news. Don't ever see bad news. You see, anywhere you look, from now on, see good news. Let your perspective change. Let your mind be expanded so that everywhere you look, all you can see is good news. And then you keep changing your positioning. And as you are doing that, you are becoming more powerful. You are becoming wealthier. And you are becoming a lifter and a helper of men. You are saving lives. You are touching lives. You are influencing others. Use what you have learned today for good. Do not take what you have learned today and take advantage of people who are in misery or in pain. Use it for good. You see, you can also use what I'm saying to you to turn bad situations into good situations for other people, not just good situations for yourself alone. Turn the bad news of other people, not just to good news for yourself, but for good, but the good news for them by including them in what you are benefiting or show or letting them participate or creating companies or organizations that puts these people in beneficial positions where they benefit from the bad things that happen. Because you see, in darkness, there is light. God calls light out of darkness. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, the King James Version. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God and the face of Jesus Christ. You see, God commanded light to shine out of darkness. Inside that bad news is good news for you. You see, inside all bad news, there is good news for you. And for even the person who received the bad news, there is good news. In all bad news, there is good news. So stop seeing bad news. Everywhere you look now, see good news. Change your perspective and your positioning. And you would enjoy the glory of the good news. Your life will just keep on going from glory to glory, from glory to glory, and from success to success, and from victory to victory. No matter what is happening around you, people will look at you and wonder and say, why is it that bad things are happening to everybody? And you are just going higher and higher and higher. It is because that when those bad things happen, you are seeing the good in it. So you are... Your perspective is changed and you are changing your positioning. So you are rising higher and higher in spite of the bad news. In spite of all the bad news around. It is not bad news you see. It is good news you see. You see the light inside the darkness and you call for the light from darkness. You see, like God did. God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. That shineth in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God and the face of Jesus Christ. You see, that bad news that was meant to harm you is actually your good news in disguise. You just have to see it. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 says in the NIV translation, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Praise the Lord. So your enemies, all the activities of your enemies are for your good. All the bad news they are trying to create for you is actually good news for you. All you have to do is change your perspective and your positioning. And you will ride on the waves and go higher and higher and higher. The waves and the floods that will be drowning everybody else will be lifting you up higher and higher and higher. You see, this is very important. So... Never say bad news. And from today, never say that something is something bad is happening to you. Never see something bad happening to you. Only see good things happening to you. This is the life that we have been called to live. You see, it's up to you. This is a reality. This is something you should now start walking in from today. Don't hear this word and turn away and go back to the way you have always been. 
You see, from today, your life is changed. From today, all you see is good news. You see good news everywhere. No matter what happens, all you see is good news. You see, since your perspective is now changed, change your perspective, expand your mind, broaden your intelligence, broaden your intellect, grow in wisdom. Then you will see clearly all the various degrees of good news in all bad news. You see, then change your position, align yourself correctly, and you will take advantage of the situations. All bad news will be for your promotion. All bad news will only lift you higher. So, that is it for today. Make sure that you do not forget what you have learned today and you apply what you have learned today from now on for the rest of your days. You see, no matter what happens. If you are listening to this broadcast, I would like to say a prayer for you. In the name of Jesus, I speak blessing over you. You are blessed. And I command every sickness, every disease, every demon of darkness to leave you now. In the name of Jesus, any demon or evil spirit that causes any illness, I command cancer to go. I command hearing problems to stop. I command the name to walk in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is moving upon you in the name of Jesus. And from today henceforth, your eyes will be opened and you will see how to turn every bad situation into good situations. You will see the good news inside every bad news and you will respond accordingly and change your positioning and you would enjoy a life of glory to glory that which will be destroying others that which was meant to destroy would lift you up and make you a savior of others that which others meant for your doom that which they meant for evil god will use it for your good and to make you a savior of many lives in the name of jesus amen a lot of you now are being healed a lot of you now a change has taken place you see you have to understand that the power of god has no limitations the power of god is limitless it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter if i called your case or not you have been healed. There has been a change taking place, you see. And a lot of you today marks a new beginning for you. The day that you begin to see good news everywhere and only good news. You now know that you have been saved from bad news. You cannot have bad news. All you have is good news. All you have is good news. You see, that is what Christ wants of you. That is what Christ has already given you. You see, this is your inheritance in Christ. You have to understand it. You have the supernatural ability to cause changes. You have the power of God in you. God lives in you. The scriptures say Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, this is a new day for you. You now realize this new truth, this new reality about life. And you will walk in the light of it. To the glory of God the Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like all of you to go to PastorAlfred.com and if you are not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and also tell your friends to subscribe to PastorAlfred.com. It is of great importance that you are subscribed to PastorAlfred.com so you will keep hearing words like this and apply yourself to what you hear. Keep making adjustments to your life, improving your life, changing your life. You see, it is not enough for you to hear Act on it. Respond to it, you see. And you would respond to it in, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You respond to it. You won't just hear what has been said and throw it away or forget it or not apply it. You would apply it, you see. So, thank you. God bless you. If you have not received Christ into your life,
Go to pastoralfred.com and in the main menu, there's a salvation prayer link. Click on it. There's a prayer of salvation for you to say. Say that prayer of salvation and follow the instructions there. I would like you to become a member of the family of God Church. It's an online fellowship. It's a series of online fellowships. You see, it's actually a fellowship that's when you begin, when you join us, you are a member. You know, even though you have joined online, you are a member. You see, you are now one of us in the family of God Church. When you go through the training program, you can start your own physical house fellowship because it's a series of fellowship joined together as one. You can start your own fellowship in your house, in your office, in your business, wherever, in a public location, perhaps a park or a section of a park, anywhere, you know. It's not a matter of number. You can just be three friends, two friends, or just your family members, or just 10 people, but you come together and fellowship. The materials that you'll be studying during such fellowships and the activities will be made available to you. So I'd like you to join the Family of God Christian Church. Go to www.thefamily.xyz. You see, it's important, and the details for that are also on pastoralfred.com. So that is it for today. Thank you and God bless you. Remember, it's only good news for you from now henceforth. Hallelujah.